Welcome to not a music track showcase this time, but to an instrument showcase. This here is the noise box, also known as the noise box. Nice. The track that you're currently listening to was fully made using this device and the application of effects. I've also made a sample pack that you can download for free by following the link in the description. You can get the pictures with all the measurements in the description as well. It was made in cooperation with a friend of mine who has the engineering know-how and skills that I lack. I'd say he did most of the work actually, but sadly due to our lack of professional tools and machines, minor fabrication errors are present. This instrument was highly inspired by the Nightmare Machine and other homemade noise boxes. In this video I want to show you what it can do and how it was made. Its main point is sound effect creation as well as horror audio composition. One advantage it has to, for example, the Nightmare Machine is that it is easier to build, easier to transport and easier to store. Another friend of mine is even planning on 3G printing a custom box for it for even easier transportation and storage. Alright, let me show you what it can actually do. First we have these metal rods that you can hit for a percussive effect, they have different lengths so they all sound different when hit. Next are these springs. You can make them hit each other to get a rattling effect. Then we have these steel strips. You've probably played around with your ruler before in school and the concept behind these is pretty much the same. And last are these metal strings. Their sound is pretty high and shrill, since they are so short, but shrill sounds are pretty great for creating a disturbing atmosphere. You can also stroke them to get a different sound. You can also of course use all kinds of tools to get a cool new effect. The sound isn't all that impressive if it's left raw, but if you apply some reverb and delay, this turns into a great horror instrument. Now let me show you what we actually used to make this box before we get into the actual building process. I've ordered everything from the German Amazon shop, but I'll link two alternatives in the American one, if I can find them. For the box I got this aluminium box. It has a pretty good size to fit a lot of components on and into it. These boxes by BUD are great alternatives if you live overseas. For the steel rods we got this stainless steel one. We ran into some problems with it though, so you might alternatively want to use rods made of a material that is easier to work with, like aluminium or brass rods, which will probably also result in a different sound though. The springs were from this set. Use the 9x35mm compression springs, but you can use whichever swing good. Extension strings might not be a good pick because of that. The strings we used were these standard western acoustic guitar strings. You can probably get strings like these at your local music store. They don't have to be the exact same brand. The ones we got had plated seal and phosphor bronze springs. And last of all we used this contact mic to pick up the sound. It's a really cheap one from China. Really good ones that are oftentimes used for recording stringed instruments cost quite a bit more. These usually take quite a while to ship and seem to be the only cheap contact mic model out there. We unfortunately didn't manage to get piezos to work, so we had to fall back onto the, this option. As for the bolts, nuts and the metal strips, we already had them at our disposal, so there was no need to order them. Important for the metal strips though, is that they are made out of spring steel, since that reduces the risk of them bending out of shape permanently. Aside from that, I already had the things that weren't directly involved in building the noise box, but are necessary to record it. 
a 6.35 jack to XLR cable, though you can alternatively also use a 6.35 to 6.35 cable and an audio interface, in my case the Scarlett Solo by Focusrite. Now let's get to the interesting part, how it was built. We mainly used the bottom side of the box instead of the lid and started with the rods. First we cut the rods into pieces, then we drilled holes into the box to fit the rods through. Drilled holes into one side of every rod and tapped metrical threads into these holes. This way we could fixate them with bolts from the other side. The springs were next. We again drilled holes into the box to make sure that we could fit bolts through and tapped metrical threads into these holes. We chose bolts with a white head so that we were able to clamp the springs in. After that we moved on to the strips. We again made holes through the box and tapped threads in them. We then drilled holes into the metal strips at the same positions and fixated everything with bolts. For the strings we did pretty much the same, again making holes into the box and tapped threads into the holes. Then we made holes into the upper end of the bolts that we were planning to use and fixated them to the box with nuts. We then put the strings through the previously drilled holes in the bolts and tied them up. The springs we used were the flatter ones to make sure that the sound doesn't end up too thin and their surface made for a more interesting sound when stroked. We had to use quite a bit of force to get them in place though. After that we cut off the rest of the strings that were looking out and thus the box was finished. All that was left to do was getting the mic in there. We actually made the hole for the mic at the very beginning, but since the piezo option didn't quite work out for us, we only got to getting the contact mic in at the very end. My engineering friend wasn't involved in the implementation process of the mic, which is why it looks so crappy. I used tape to get it to stay in place. There is probably a better option, but it does work as long as you don't have to get the cable in and out too often. Though I might need to work on a more permanent solution at a later point. As I said at the very beginning, if you want to work with the samples that I recorded from this box, or would like to see the Imgur album with the exact measurements, then head on down to the description.